Good morning, good afternoon. Thanks for attending the Oracle Digital Assistant webinar. Thanks for joining our quarterly webcast. I'm Jürgen Kress, part of the Oracle Product Management Team. In case you missed one of our webcasts, on-demand recordings are available at the Oracle Video Hub, including presentation for download. In today's presentation, Joe Wang and Leonardo will update us on the latest Oracle Digital Assistant features. Good morning, Leonardo. Great. Thanks for being with us. What are you going to present today, Leo? What are the new features in Oracle Digital Assistant? So what we're trying to uh, show today is some really exciting general AI updates for Oracle Digital Assistant. I think in previous calls, we have cool. sort of um, give a very early uh, preview of that. Um, we have actually released quite a few um, features. And today, we're going to show both the uh, runtime, what it can do, but also design time, how you can do it. Excellent, thanks. Exciting webcast. So with Oracle Digital Assistant, customized bots can be developed or pre-built SaaS skills and templates, for example, for HCM or Oracle service can be leveraged and extended. Skills and templates are almost available for all SaaS services, including service, sales, expenses, PeopleSoft and Siebel. Objective of the call is to update you on the Digital Assistant functionality, and we host this webinar each quarter. Quick housekeeping, today's session is live and the session is recorded. Please feel free to post your questions via the conference Q&A tool in this Zoom console anytime. At the end of the webcast, we'll answer them. Slides and an on-demand webcast will be posted at Oracle Video Hub. We will post announcements and links in the conference chat. Please complete the online survey at the end of the webinar. As we will present some roadmap information, please pay attention to the Oracle Safe Hub statement. Please do tweet and blog about products and services which are available today. Some quick updates. If you would like to try Oracle Digital Assistant, it's available part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure free trial for 30 days. And you can activate it anytime and provision Oracle Digital Assistant. Make use of the documentation and training material when you start a free trial. And there are nice labs available via Live Lab. If you have questions about the product, as part of the documentation website, Arti, a digital assistant, will help you. Who are the digital assistant experts who can support your customer projects? Partners are key to help you to implement successful product digital assistant. At Partner Finder, you can search for certified partners per region. And at Todd Marketplace, you can even find pre built skills from partners. Questions need support, collaborate at Oracle Cloud Customer Connect. In discussion forums, you can share your knowledge, engage with industry experts, and network with peers. You can submit innovations and earn personal badges. Please visit Cloud Customer Connect. For regular updates, please subscribe to our customer newsletter. The quarterly newsletter keeps you updated from the product management team with the latest product news, technical articles, and demos, including events like today's webcast. Today's webcast is recorded and will be published at Oracle Video Hub. For presentation download, please make sure that you log in. With this short introduction, I would like to hand over to you, Joe. So my name is Joe Wong, and uh, I'm going to uh, co-present this with um, uh, with the, um, uh, of course, uh, you heard from uh, Jürgen, and I'll also co-present this with uh, Leo. Uh, Leo is a recent addition to the, uh, uh, the outbound product management team, and um, and if you are um, based in um, EMEA region, uh, and of course, if you're in LAD region, you already uh, know and uh, work with uh, Leo. But if you're in EMEA region, uh, Leo is based in Brazil, and he would be working with um, you and your team. Uh, and also, of course, on the call here, uh, as usual, is Robbie, uh, who is also a part of the outbound product management team. Uh, and then continue to look at uh, North America. So again, thank you for joining and we're here to answer questions. Again, as a reminder, as Jürgen said, please post your questions to Q&A. What we're gonna cover today is the, how do you generate general AI into digital assistant, right? You know, you work with digital assistant and uh, you have seen uh, digital assistant before, and uh, you may be wondering how does the late, this latest wave of the um, uh, large language models and generative AI work with that digital assistant? Now, 
first of all, uh, in case it's the first time you have joined this uh, webcast, um, welcome, first of all. And um, yeah, just uh, what if this is a digital assistant uh, for those of you who joined the first time, digital system is part of the uh, Oracle AI suite of AI services. It's been in production since 2017 with a few hundred live customers uh, across both um, technology platform customers as well as SaaS customers. It's a conversational uh, AI platform that automates um, customer self-service and also employee self-service. Those are the two sweet spots that we have. It leverages deep learning, uh, this uh, concept of using transformers and semantic parsing based natural language processing. Now, we don't normally use these terms, but now with the uh, popularity of Gen AI, the form, you know, the term transformers, which is the T in GPT, is becoming a lot more uh, popular. So yes, we embedded that uh, technology very early on. Uh, and uh, of course, it's now only uh, becoming a more popular uh, vernacular. Uh, we have a pretty rich set of pre-built enterprise uh, horizontal and vertical um, uh, skills, and also a very strong um, uh, voice and uh, uh, recognition and uh, um, text-to-speech engine with uh, custom vocabulary support. Again, that's uh, unique in the industry. You can train the voice recognition engine, voice-to-text engine to understand uh, custom languages. By the way, this is very key and critical to some of the new healthcare work that we're working on. As you know, a lot of the healthcare um, vocabulary is custom, right? So, uh, um, and um, I, I cannot pronounce it. <laughs> and uh, so uh, the uh, it, it uh, takes um, um, a very um, uh, advanced and also well-trained voice uh, engine to be able to recognize that. So we're doing that. We have a lot of lo no code, low code tool for skills development. Uh, we have very rich set of insights that allows you to look at usage and adoption and the enterprise grade lifecycle management. Uh, again, common use cases, customer support, employee self-service, uh, and also consuming knowledges and also uh, enterprise automation. Uh, one thing to remember is that, yes, there are a lot of um, chatbot digital system platform that's on the market today. Largely, they provide point solutions um, or a la carte type of solution. Digital assistant is an end-to-end uh, well-integrated platform that delivers all these functionalities. Again, for those of you who who uh, are attending the uh, call for the first time, um, the concept of digital assistant is the following. So you start with any sort of enterprise application, whether it's a supply chain management, ERP, HCM, or customer uh, experiences, or knowledge or third party, right? Who doesn't have a ton of uh, policy documents? And we have some really cool um, features that we're going to show <laughs> very quickly after the, uh, uh, you know, shortly. Um, and then basically you, the, uh, uh, you know, the digital assistant developer will create these individual skills. And uh, these are typically focused um, sort of functionality the uh, that focus on a specific dialogue um, and, uh, Previously, the initial term for this is chatbot. We call it skills. And these are all evolving into what we call agents. So then individually, you'll eventually be creating agents uh, in the generative AI assistant future. Uh, the way that it works today, however, is of course, uh, once you develop these skills, then you compose your digital assistant, right? Uh, and uh, by selecting these skills and then connecting these into a variety of uh, conversational channels, whether it's SMS, whether it's Microsoft Teams or Slack for enterprise use uh, or for um, uh, as well as for Zoom uh, and then um, and then for uh, consumer Facebook and uh, SMS as well as a web channel. Uh, and we're evolving actually the entire stack here for general AI. So Leo is going to talk about some of the uh, items. And then one last slide on what we currently have today uh, and also maybe a little bit of roadmap. Um, and uh, we mentioned that there's a pretty rich set of pre-built enterprise assistant skills from Oracle, uh, whether it's from HCM. HCM, we're talking about um, for HCM functionality, what's my vacation balance? Uh, can I provide a, a feedback for a fellow worker who's doing a great job? Um, uh, hi, Gergen. And, uh, um, and uh, or uh, recruiting, uh, 
say, if I need to find a new job, the, um, there's a recruiting assistant uh, to help with that. Uh, for ERP, of course, we have enterprise performance management. There's a rich set of um, functionality around account reconciliation and financial closing. Uh, expenses assistant has been around for a long time. We in Oracle use it every day. Uh, and um, just go ahead and upload a receipt and uh, it will create a uh, uh, expense for me. Uh, for SCM, we have logistics, uh, we have a sales skills. And then for CX, that's another rich set of uh, functionality that we have providing live agent integration, intelligent advisor, um, and uh, integration with the different knowledge bases, uh, field service, uh, and also HR and uh, IT and uh, different type of help desk. And of course, uh, apps on limited, PeopleSoft have a very rich set of uh, skills under Picasso for both employee and also for students. Uh, and uh, there's some skills for Siebel. What we're really working on, and uh, you'll hear more and more about this in the coming webcast, is this Oracle Health related um, uh, assistant. Uh, a good portion of the team, I think most of you know, um, uh, you know, Grant Runnell and uh, his excellent team, Frank Nymphius, Vincent, they're all focused now on building this um, uh, digital, uh, uh, building the digital system for Oracle Health, for clinical digital assistant, uh, and also for, um, and also we're building uh, and working with the teams to work on creating patient portal, patient assistant, as well as a, um, a desktop co-pilot. Uh, this is a um, uh, major initiative um, and is recognized as probably the most important uh, strategic innovation from Oracle, uh, with the especially with the uh, uh, very uh, well-known Cerner acquisition. Now, uh, digital system is getting deeply embedded into Cerner, and that's a key um, area of investment for us to bring in these uh, uh, assistant features into um into Cerner. And if you attend the Oracle Health Conference, you have uh, heard a lot about the clinical digital assistant. Um, and then there are other um, um, services as well. These are all listed in the documentation side. And of course, in the documentation side, you can find Artie who can answer a lot of these questions. All right. So what are, um, what, now off to the, uh, the core of uh, today's discussion, you know, Oracle Digital Assistant 2310, the uh, general AI assistant. Now, uh, what is general AI assistant and what is digital assistant? What we're doing is taking general AI technology and uh, not only just integrate with general AI technology, but actually use that as the core of our engine. And uh, as we evolve general AI and large language model to be core of our engine, we're evolving this <coughs> product into general AI assistant. So uh, over time, you actually start to hear more and more of us using the term general AI assistant. And as we uh, embed more and more uh, general AI features into digital assistant. And um, one of the key things initially that we're focusing on is large language model uh, integration, right? So again, this is about a year ago now, time flies, isn't it? That uh, chat GPT was released. And uh, it caught the world by storm. And uh, since that time, uh, it seems like a million large language models has hit the streets. And um, uh, the Dali and uh, Da Vinci, the uh, ya the llamas, <laughs> I won't call it llama, llamas and uh, uh, Bart, and now a Gemini from Google just announced some new uh, features and all the saga at uh, OpenAI, you know, gosh, a lot of things happened in the last year. This is an extremely exciting year. Uh, but however, it, you know, I think it still comes back to this. It's, it's how do you make sure that large language model work, right, for your enterprise? How do you know if uh, they're working well? You know, at the end of the day, large language model works on a set of, um, um, generates the output based on a stochastic process. <laughs> Sorry, I need to use this uh, little bit of an academic term, but basically based on probabilities. Um, and, uh, but, and also need, you know, and uh, so, you know, it's hard to say whether they're going to work well or not well. And uh, so that that's the key thing. And actually Leo is going to go through, how do we ensure that when things does not work, 
uh, we have a validation mechanism to um, to work against that. So that's what we're doing, right? So on the left side here, you see these three layers, and that's uh, basically what large language model based offerings uh, have today. Um, base model is basically the the GPTs, the um, generally pre-trained transformers, <laughs> now um, uh, world famous, the uh, but also uh, llamas and BARD and so forth. And these are based large language models that are trained with billions of tokens or, or, um, or words. Um, and um, and then on top of that, right? So, so these based large language models basically just knows how to mimic, how to generate text in order to make it useful. Uh, there's a layer on top called instruction fine tuning that basically train and add um, ability to, oh, recognizing if you're asking a question, then it will instruct the base model to generate an answer rather than just simply say, oh, what is the capital of uh, France? Um, the answer should be Paris. Um, okay. But if without that uh, instruction fine tuning layer, it could also be reply as what is the capital of Germany? <laughs> and uh, um, and just repeat back uh, just using a different uh, terminology uh, or sort of different phrase. So that's what instruction fine tuning does. Then on top of that is the dialogue optimization and using reinforced learning human feedback. And that layer basically gives you uh, give um, allows human to you know using basically a ranking system to look at all the possible output from the base model and say what answers are reasonable, what answer is not reasonable. So a, a pretty uh, you know, famous example would be that, oh, you know, when Christopher Columbus landed in the New World in um, year 2015, what is the first thing that he saw? Well, that answer doesn't make any sense. However, how would the base model know that <laughs> 2015 is uh, way after Christopher Columbus actually uh, lived? Uh, that's where the uh, reinforced learning human feedback would do to be able to eliminate some of these uh, answers and say, oh, this is nonsensical. Okay, that's great. That's actually what uh, ChatGPT Chat -Chat uh, allows you to do. But if you use ChatGPT, you know that, uh, well, you can ask a lot of questions, but the answer is still unpredictable. And the second thing is that if you're working with enterprise in an enterprise setting, right, um, do you expect your user to create these um Prompts, right? Prompt is how you instruct the uh, uh, large language model to um, generate response. Uh, not really, right? That, that, does that mean everyone, all the user needs to be a prompt engineer in order to get something they need? You know, also doesn't mean that uh, you should fine tune your um, large language model with uh, enterprise uh, data to uh, in order to answer the question, the answer is definitely no. It's actually very difficult to to fine tune a large language model. Also very expensive. So where does that um, leave us? Well, that's where digital system comes in, right? And what we're focusing on is providing layers of services that makes the large language model work for you. So starting with enterprise data connectivity, I think most of you are familiar with that. We have a REST connector. We have a custom component that can connect with backend services they can use and um, provide as a context and uh, into the, your skill. Uh, there's a data awareness or retrieval mechanism that we embed into the process. Uh, we also have uh, user context and user um, subsystem that are um, you know you can uh, leverage in the uh, digital system um, stack today. So all of these platform services then allow you to feed the um, um, into prompt to the large language model and allows you to basically do prompt engineering. And uh, again, this is a relatively new term. I'm sure most of you heard it by now. The uh, it's, um, it talks about basically how you generate a prompt and a lot of times complicate a prompt to really generate an outcome or um, um, that suits your need. Uh, and um, so we're going to talk about we are um, providing a mechanism for you to uh, create a prompt and build a prompt as well as the chaining these together. By chaining these together, we mean that uh, if you, you know, let's say you wanted to first, uh, you know, 
consume and send a large uh, set of data to large language model for analysis to generate a summary, right? And a large language model is very good at doing that. Then you want to say, oh, but based on the summary, I want to you to extract the top three, uh, you know, key points uh, for uh, for this summary. And large language model can do that. But how do you chain that together? So the digital assistant, as you know, Visual Flow allows you to do that. And of course, you can also do a multi-prompt planning orchestration. The cool thing, of course, is what if you need to talk to most multiple large language models? And different large language models are good at different things. Uh, and also different costs. Sometimes you um, don't need a, a, a GPT-4 to get the results you need. Maybe it's an open source, a smaller model would do. And the digital system allows you to, to do that as well. We want to allow you to, uh, to do that. Uh, and then on top of that, um, the ability to control the prompt. So in other words, what if, um, you know, you want your end user to be able to use the um, functionality to generate uh, text, for example, using large language model, but without exposing them to have to engineer a prompt and also expose the system to potential um, uh, prompt, uh, we'll call it prompt leak. So a uh, large language model out of the box may not be able to tell the difference between an employee and a manager. What if the employee asked the large language model, well, I need to see the salary of my manager Right. And uh, and uh, large language model may be trained to prevent that. But, you know, clever um, prompt engineers can work around that. So the, uh, we aim to provide a control over that as well as validating. Uh, and uh, so Leo is going to to show how we do that as well. And also life cycle management. You may uh, over time um, improve and update your prompt and uh, save it as one version, test it, iterate it, and then um, release it, and then keep on iterating and uh, releasing new updates while the uh, user is using older update. All of these lifecycle management, we also provide uh, to that. So that that's basically uh, a lot of what we provide. Again, there are you know, a lot of uh, open source software that's on the market today that does this, for example. And um, uh, just like when Chapa was first introduced a lot of large language, uh, sorry, a lot of um, um, a lot of the uh, um, the uh, um, sort of these smaller vendors and uh, that uh, startups that um, does that. There are a lot of startups uh, that does this, but um, if um, you're looking for an enterprise grade platform. Uh, with the uh, over the security stability, then digital assistant is going to provide you with that. All right. So how do you add general AI technology to uh, to the existing digital assistant? Uh, I think most of you have heard of SQL Dialog, um, and uh, Robbie introduced and discussed in this forum about six months ago. Uh, and uh, on the uh, SQL Dialog, the ability to chat with your SQL database. Um, we have now in 2310, our October, November release, released large language model blocks uh, that's generally available. And we're going to do a demo of that. Uh, we're also working on limited availability for knowledge dialogue, be able to add your unstructured data as well as um, uh, um, and co-pilot SDK, which is the next generation web SDK that we're planning to make available for limited availability, that Copilot SDK would provide much tighter integration between user interface and the uh, uh, and the uh, digital assistant. And uh, Leo is going to talk about that as well. All right, at this point, I'm going to um, stop sharing and hand this off to Leo to talk about uh, these uh, knowledge dialogue, large language models, and the Copilot SDK. Okay, well, uh, from knowledge dialogue perspective, the idea is that we enable uh, natural language conversation against to existing knowledge base. What we do is leverage finally built-in LLM on OGA to generate answers based on multiple sources. And and we can support various formats for the files from knowledge base as well. Uh, the idea 
is that you give us the knowledge source and that from there, you don't have to build any intents or any additional skills assets. We can very quickly enable your end users to be asked questions. Uh, we support context follow-ups, for example, in, on this, in this case here, the user is asking about collateral cancer and in the next question, uh, OGA can consider the context of the previous question to generate the answer. Let me show for you this functionality in, in action. Just a second. Okay. So, I have OGA here, okay? And I will create uh, an skill, a skill here, okay? Web. And now I just need to add my document in this menu, okay, conversation to knowledge. I can create, for example, webinar demo here. And as I said, you can use uh, a lot of formats here. For example, PDF files, HTML files, CSV files, etc. And you can use um, uh, our, our object story as well, okay? So I will put my file here, just a second. I will use this document. Okay. And the interesting thing here that you can use a zip file. I mean, you can use a multiple files as well, okay? So OGA will register uh, this, this uh, file in the uh, base. Let's wait some time. Okay. And now I will open my file to get some question here. Just a second. We can see here a lot of uh, uh, inputs like tables, etc. So it's not a problem here. Let me get for example, Oracle Digital Assistant, something like this, what is Oracle Digital Assistant, for example. So, let's wait. Oh, 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 oh. We are getting some, some problems here. I don't know why, just a second. Joe, can you help me? Let's wait some I time. Think we uh, we test this before. Yeah, uh, you could. It's very strange. Yeah, I mean, maybe you could try it again. If not, then uh, just use uh, uh, any other skill. Oh. That's okay. Sure, um, sure. That's sure. in there. Yeah. So it's in the. You know, we haven't made this. Uh, fully available yet and a limited availability. So um, you're still running a demo uh, dev environment. Unfortunately, they're not uh, always very stable. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's weird. Yeah. That's weird. Yesterday I tested it and everything is okay. working. Yeah, if uh, it doesn't work, we can use um, um, uh, another uh, uh, knowledge mm -hmm. uh, group. And the idea of a knowledge group just for everyone's uh, benefit is the it's a group of documents 
uh, whether it's knowledge articles or anything that um, that you will want to group together. So when knowledge dialogue uh, perform, oh, you ask a question, uh, and then knowledge dialogue is going to uh, be able to search across all the knowledge articles across the uh, uh, you know across this. So um, yeah, so if, if, for example, we have um, um, imported oh, some. We have insurance uh, document from uh, Singapore life insurance those are public documents uh and uh that we're able to uh, ingest and then you can ask questions around that um, yeah so excellent uh, strange strange okay let me try something here so in my skill I will try to use my it's very very unstable sorry for this guys web okay and now i just to add my my document group here okay i look uh let me try again Okay. Uh, let 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 me try. Um, I think the problem is only in the Y here. Okay, let's try. Uh, look, I don't have any intents, any uh, entities, and any flow here, conversation flow here. So. I will try to send a message, for example, what is our digital system? And let's see. Nope, no, no, no. Maybe you can use here. Do, do you know these documents in this instance? Yeah, I think you can just use uh, maybe the uh, uh... Uh, Singapore Life, um, that one. Um, I have to improvise a little bit, unfortunately. Uh, but you can ask a question, for example, uh, around what's uh, what's car insurance. What's group? Yeah. What's group? Sorry. Uh, there's the one called Sing Life. Uh, uh, no, S I N. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought there was one. Which, uh, sorry, I'm confused. Um, yeah, it's confused. <laughs> okay, so uh, look for the HCM. Uh, sorry, there's one for HCM. That's the one I used earlier. HCM assist. Uh, no, no, HCM knowledge demo November office hour. Hopefully that one okay, still works. Perfect. And now can I send, for example... If I think what you can say, what is the, uh, okay, this is going to be hard to spell. What is the disciplinary ah, can you put the, policy? <laughs> can you put this uh, phrase in, in the chat, please? In the... Okay, thank you. So... Um, Sorry for this, guys. Let's see. Nah. Nope. Nope. I think the problem is in this, uh, in our uh, instance, Joe. But the point is, okay, I will, I will show for you uh, in other instance. Joe, can you explain uh, to them about uh, for example, copilot, and I will get another instance here. I need just two minutes. Yeah. Okay. Is it possible? So, um, why don't Can we? Uh, this, uh... Yeah. So, why don't I uh, continue with uh, with this a little bit, um, and um, with um, <clears throat> talking about what the what that uh, looks like for uh, knowledge dialogue. Um, 
And um, so I think we have, let's see. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let me share my screen. Okay. Okay. Apologies for the uh, issues. Um, so there are two knowledge dialogue. Once it's uh, uh, the design time is working, the runtime would look like this. One example is let's say if you ingest a uh, 401k uh, benefits document, right? And uh, this document is just a PDF that contains a bunch of uh, 401k, which uh, for those of you outside the United States, 401k is the retirement uh, benefit um, uh, account that's allowed uh, by the government to be tax free. And uh, so um, it's just a document. However, you can ask questions in the document. So there was a question around what is the uh, knowledge and um, um, how do you consume unstructured data? This is how you would do that. You ask a question and it generates the, uh, uh, the answer, right? And uh, basically the, it has the ability to understand the question you're asking, find the right answers and extract that answer and display that answer in a uh, uh, in a good uh, format. Another um, you know way you can kind of uh, visualize how this will work is by uh, using uh, looking at uh, something that we're internally rolling out, which is my Oracle search. And as you most of you know, when you ask a knowledge base, and this is how my Oracle search, which is our employee portal, works: is you ask a question, it returns you. A bunch of uh, uh, links to um, articles. That's great, but what if you want to directly ask a question? So, for example, uh, let's say I have the unfortunate uh, uh, event of my laptop is damaged, and actually I need to get a uh, rental laptop. <laughs> actually, this is true. I need to do that because uh, my battery is dead. I'm going on a trip. Um, so, with gener AI and uh, knowledge dialogue. Um, when it's implemented, it's able to provide an extract an answer from these knowledge articles, right? And the the the, uh, the answer would be able to basically, oops, sorry, kind of skipped over the generating part. So for those of you who are yeah who are familiar sorry. with this, um, is um, uh, you recognize this is, is a very popular and common pattern. On the market today, uh, that's and this arc the architecture of this feature is based on this retrieval augmented generation architecture, uh, but this is much more than that. And the reason is that you know the um, uh, the vendors and uh, whether it's um, you know the the solution that's on the market today or coming to the market are basically a what we call Lego block for building your um, uh, retrieval augmented generation uh, solution. But as Leo is showing, and also as this is showing, this is tightly integrated with digital systems. So making that much more powerful, you can mix and match different type of uh, solutions. Okay, uh, Leo, so, um, sorry. Now, um, I will use here in my instance, this document, okay? I have this document here in my bucket and I will uh, create a new group webinar for example, and I will, in this case, I will use uh, my, oops, uh, my storage URL, okay? Because again, you can use um, your bucket or your local files. It's not a problem here. So I'm, I, add, I added my, my file here. Let's wait some time. It's very quickly. Okay, perfect. Now it, it works. Uh, and now I will create my my skill here, webinar. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> and I just need to add my group here in my skill so i will put webinar i will add webinar my group here and done so now i can ask my for example what is this for example
And now, OJ will generate um, uh, uh, an answer for us. It's fantastic. It's very, very great. And very fast as well, okay? Okay, it's a, a small demo of this fantastic uh, uh, functionality. And also, uh, you can enable the feedback uh, functionality so that users can also um, uh, say how your bot uh, is working, is generating an answer, uh, so it's great, okay? Another new uh, functionality in OGA is uh, the Copilot. Copilot is um, it's a very, very uh, new and uh, flexible way for you to connect OGA to your applications. In this case, you can use OGA's conversational AI capability with uh, your application, uh, and you can use uh, all the context. I mean, the application context, the user context, context and the page context in the conversation. So, uh, of course, you can use uh, uh, the Gen AI for this as well. So we have a great functionality here and I will show for you uh, a simple demo of this functionality, okay? Uh, so we have here uh, on pay, a page and you can use OGA uh, as using emb em embedded mode of OJ in your page. But as I said, you can use as well OJ in your page. So you can use uh, the powerful of uh, OJ in your application with context. In this case, I, I, I'm using, just a second, I will show for you. Uh, in my configuration, I put uh, the page application uh, uh, context in just a second. I'm using, okay. So we have here in OGA a new configuration part to uh, copilot. So in my case, so you can create rules here in OGA for your application, your page, and fields uh, in your page uh, with OJ. In this case, I'm using, in this simple example, I'm using this field. So because of this, I put this field here. Okay, job description. So it, it's very simple to use and very interesting because you can use uh, OGA uh, as a um, background of your application, okay? And, uh, and again, you can ask everything here as well. For example, uh, what uh, benefits are available to IC3? for example, and the OJ will generate the answer for you. So it's very easy. Uh, the, the, the end user uh, doesn't need to understand the menus, uh, your application. I mean, he just need to send a question to OJ and OJ will generate an answer to this end user. So it's very, very interesting. And we can have now uh, the 
LLM blocks in OJ. As Joe said, you can use a lot of models. I mean, uh, OpenAI, uh, Oracle Correre, etc. And this is very, very simple to use uh, because you can just need to add this um, block, this component in your um, in your uh, dialogue flow. And the, the important thing here is the prompt. So you can use uh, the parameters in your dialogue flow, in your uh, prompt to generate uh, uh, things uh, using the context. And it's very, very interesting here. Okay, uh, for today, I think that's all, Joe. Yeah, I think the uh, large language model, I, um, as far as the, you know, I think what uh, Leo has shown is uh, first a knowledge dialogue, and the second thing is the uh, uh, large language model. And I think, um, uh, and as far as, um, uh, and as far as how to configure that, however, um, what um, want to uh, just very quickly using the last ten minutes, and I know we also have some questions. I'll try to answer that uh, as well, right? So we went through the uh, creating knowledge dialogue. I also, um, we didn't really talk a whole lot about Copilot SDK, but uh, Copilot is the ability to tightly integrate. The UI with um, uh, Assistant. I think most of you probably have heard about the Microsoft Copilot. Uh, we're creating that uh, framework as well. It's basically the next generation uh, web SDK. So you will be able to create uh, content as emails, job description, and things like that as a micro conversation. You see this little thing um, dialogue pop up there. And of course, uh, Leo just went through going through the uh, uh, general AI, adding uh, large language models and uh, integrate into the uh, uh, digital assistant and um, uh, the ability to uh, integrate prompt uh, and um, for you to ingest prompts. Uh, and also um, there's quite a bit of an extensive uh, validation uh, that's built into the uh, large language model to be able to validate whether the uh, LLM responses is going to uh, uh, is conform to what you ask it to do. Uh, again, just to a quick recap of what uh, Leo have just shown. Uh, so for example, you can create a, in this case, a validation entity and that validation entity can make sure that the uh, large language model responses actually contains all of these um, uh, items listed in the uh, validation. So let's say if you ask LLM to generate something with A, B, C, D, and uh, it only generates A, B, C, but not D, the uh, validation framework can capture that, right? And uh, there's also a very rich, rich uh, prompt builder that allows you to um, engineer your prompt and test the output um, as Leo has shown. Okay, so um, let me see. Okay, so let me see. I know that there's uh, uh, there's also some other uh, updates to 2310, <clears throat> which I'll go through very quickly. One is uh, uh, SQL Dialog, uh, and, and I'm very excited to announce that we now have support for MySQL, and uh, not just a uh, um, Oracle SQL database for the SQL Dialog feature, um, and also we have um, um, improvement in SQL dialog interpretation and uh, generation. So again, we're able to understand a little bit more complex SQL, like for example, multi-column order by, range based on where clause and things like that. Um, so these are all in 2310 uh, as well. Uh, and also the uh, there's a new Zoom app. And if you're able to find it in the uh, 
Zoom app. Uh, there's a Zoom app for Digital Assistant. Uh, the initial release is pretty fairly straightforward. Basically, it's to enable you to just basically add Digital Assistant in a Zoom um, meeting. Uh, and uh, in the future releases, we're going to uh, add more ability to actually have this interact with actual people. However, you know, even in the initial release, you can basically uh, directly access Digital Assistant in your Zoom uh, meeting client without having to, you know, launch another UI or anything. Uh, this essentially creates the uh, uh, Zoom as a, uh, another channel. And some of the other items that we have in uh, 2310, uh, there are now automated data management. So uh, if you keep worrying about uh, having to purge your conversation logs, uh, there's an auto purge now that you can enable. Uh, there's enhanced insights and also there are a time and date enhancement in the time and date entities. Um, and oh, enhanced insights, I forgot to mention, the, uh, we have better, uh, you know, we introduced the concept of uh, users um, in insights, but now we have ability to uh, add um, and track net new users. So I think most of you might be interested to know if you have net new users uh, for this. All right. So um, before I turn this back over to um, uh, Jurgen, sorry, uh, just very quickly, let me see if I can answer some of the questions. Uh, there are quite sure. a few questions that's there. Yeah. Can you go to uh -huh. the next slide? I summarize it and then I ask you the questions. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Of course. Yeah, go ahead. Super. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the nice presentation. So for all customers, if you would like to try Oracle Digital Assistant, you can get a free trial. We had a website where you learn also more about Oracle Digital Assistant. Please make use of the documentation. Once you try and test it, and as part of the documentation, we also have some live labs which are guided trainings. Today's webcast is live. We recorded it and we will publish an on-demand version, including the slides at Oracle Video Hub. If you have questions, you can post them, continue to post them at Oracle Cloud Customer Connect, and please subscribe to our newsletter. For partners, register for the community, then you get access to the community website and attend one of our digital assistant trainings. With that, we come to the Q&A. If you go to the next slide, please. All right. Okay. Thank you. So Sorry we have a couple that. of questions for you. First yeah. of all, we right. would like to know if digital assistant with the generative AI features is available in specific regions and how can they get access to it? Yeah, excellent question. So uh, the our large language block feature is generally available today. So you can access that uh, today in any uh, digital system 2310 instances. Uh, and uh, large language model blocks uh, uses bring your own LLM model, which means that you would need to subscribe your own large language model. You can use a third party LLM or uh, Oracle's um, uh, LLM offerings, which is the uh, general AI cloud service with Cohere, which is currently in beta that's launching formally in January. However, you can ask your OCI tendency to be whitelisted or sorry, allow listed for um, for JNI cloud service and large language model uh, blocks can communicate with that. And then for the other features, uh, knowledge uh, dialogue, we, uh, we're very close to making that uh, limited availability available. We're going through some very last minute um, legal reviews and also rollout. Uh, there's a question on it's uh, availability on which data center is gonna be available. Uh, initially, the um, knowledge dialogue feature is gonna be available in the Ashburn data center. Uh, that's where uh, GPU is located. Uh, as you know, generating the output, the way no, um, knowledge dialogue works is that it uses large language model to generate the output, right? And, uh, um, and that requires GPU resources. And that's still kind of limited. Uh, initially, it's going to be in the uh, uh, Ashburn Data Center. However, if you're based in EMEA, whether part of the world, you can always just uh, spin up an instance in uh, Ashburn um, and um, um, and uh, to be able to uh, test it out, and it will be rolled out to other part of the uh, the world as well. And so that that's basically where we are today. And I think we also cover availability for other uh, Gen AI. Uh, 
feature. Excellent. So the next question comes from Bradley. He would like to know if you, like you mentioned, you can use different large language models and how yeah. can you control the data, uh, your enterprise data in those models? That's a very good question. So what I like to do is go back to basically uh, just use this slide as a sort of um, uh, aid, right? So um, in the dialogue flow, there's this new um, um, component called um, large language model blocks. And you can see that um, you're sending both the prompt as well as these free market expressions, right? These are basically represents the data to the large language model, right? So um, you basically, you the developer will control what data gets sent to the large language model that you feel comfortable with, as well as the entire prompt. So that's the short answer to, to your question is how this is how you sent the data. You use ODA to retrieve the data, to call the REST service, use REST service connector, uh, and then, um, um, and then sent that as part of the prompt um, and um, and uh, as part of the uh, this uh, uh, free marker expression. Excellent. So a question also regarding the data on large language models in Kumar is, can you limit the data like you mentioned that you should not see the salary of your manager? Yeah, absolutely. So this is one of the key feature for the, uh, um, for, LLM blocks is that end user, right? Doesn't, is not able to just freely interact with large language model. They will still work in the context of a digital system and you can control what type of question they can ask and not quite ask. Um, and then, but, and, but you, the developer, then would be the one that constructs the prompt to properly interact with the large language model with the right data context to secure and protect the uh, uh, end user from, uh, you know, from potentially uh, leaking this type of question. So, and also again, since you're using ODA to access the data, all of the uh, data access controls layers and in the API would also be uh, uh, be controlled. And the last but not the least is um, the um, um, with the validation framework can also ring fence your interaction with LLM. We can generate, make sure that there's no, um, we can reduce <laughs> and limit hallucinations uh, and, uh, and validate responses. So that's how we would uh, uh, be able to do that, to be able to uh, uh, validate these uh, responses. Even if a large language model, for example, returns some uh, content but with this um, uh, validation framework, you'll be able to cache that as well. Okay. Last question on large language models uh, from Desai is if we can use also self-hosted models. Uh, absolutely. So the uh, um, you can absolutely the LM block can be used. You know, to call any large language model uh, through the API layer, we can work with basically any. Uh, large language model. Uh, and um, basically, as long as it has a Rust API uh, layer, which all of it does, you can, you know, that could be hosted in your environment. Uh, and let's say if you decide to use uh, OCI uh, GPU resources uh, and uh, host your own LLM, um, then you can have ODA call that. Uh, and of course, since everything is in OCI, everything is nice and secure. Right, nothing ever goes out, and this is obviously important for uh, high security type of uh, use cases. Okay, next question is it comes from Edward. He would like to know if analytics can be also used in combination with Oracle Assistant, so business users can ask the native language the query. Absolutely. So that's an excellent question that we'll address in. Hopefully in the next uh, quarterly update, we're working actively with uh, Oracle um, uh, uh, Analytics Cloud on the integration. Uh, long or short of it, you can, uh, the integration is uh, primarily initially going to focus on helping Oracle Analytics Cloud developers. So you can use natural language to say, oh, you know, show me all the data that's across, you know, the top three scores in the, uh, uh, the Premier League and Europe and and then of those three, which ones scores the uh, the highest per game? 
uh, and uh, um, or uh, I don't know which nationality they uh, belong to, which teams, uh, and uh, which of the players um, score um, has the most championship <laughs> of those high scores. You do a lot of these uh, um, sort of uh, um, uh, what do you call it? the. Uh, uh, slicing and dicing use natural language uh, with the uh, digital system OAC uh, integration. Yeah, and we did a previous webcast with a partner called CPX Impact from the UK. They presented a customer success story for a large financial service client in the UK. So you can search for this webcast on Oracle Video Hub. Joe, any other questions you would like to highlight? Uh, let's see. I think um, one thing, uh, I think uh, there's an interesting question around co-pilot and agent assist. Um, we're also working with the uh, Oracle CX service team on agent assist. And uh, and the concept is to integrate a digital assistant as well as other features, obviously, to assist live agent uh, for, um, uh, for uh, customer running CX service and uh, digital assistant. Uh, and uh, so that's the sort of the general feature there. Copilot is simply the way that um, the uh, how the information is offered. So yeah, there's actually to confuse you further perhaps is and there's an agent assist co it will be a, a surface as an agent assist copilot. The copilot is a much more generic um, UI uh, web SDK um, an enhancement that really delivers much better integration with between conversations and uh, when web UI. So for example, you can say something in the conversation and it would drive a uh, web UI to display a new screen, uh, update data and so forth. Wonderful. Leonardo, last question for you on external links. What's the best way to include an external link in a digital assistant? Yeah, we can include this um, uh, where else in our knowledge documents. Uh, you can use uh, your documents uh, in a lot of languages. Uh, it's not a problem. I sent the the link, the documentation link in the question and answers chat. I think right. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for attending today's webcast. If you have questions, you can reach out to the team. There's Barry supporting Asia. There's Roby supporting North America, Leonardo, South America, and Mayor. And feel free to reach out to Leo and myself also. We would like to say thank you and Merry Christmas. Thanks for attending today's webcast. Please complete the online survey once you leave. And we are looking forward to welcoming you again on March 27th in the new year. Thanks for attending. Bye.